to say good evening to everyone. To those that are present in the house of our Lord and to those that are online. We want to take this opportunity to thank God uh, for one more opportunity that he allowed us to assemble ourselves in the house of worship. Uh, and it's always my prayer to our Heavenly Father that he would send his spirit <coughs> in our midst on yes, this evening oh, yeah. and that his spirit would just come in and have his way yes. and that his spirit would take control mm -hmm. remove me speak through me and open up all our understanding to help us receive your word that we will First of all, become better servants unto you, dear master. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have another very helpful lesson. Very helpful. Oh, yeah. And you know, uh, <laughs> as I was, the subject, let me say this first. The yes. subject is a faithful servant in the church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And our lesson text comes from Acts 9, 36 through 43. Mm -hmm. Again, a faithful servant in the church. Now we know when we get into the book of Acts, we're dealing with the birth, birth of the church. Yes, sir. And we go back to Acts 6, uh, and it'd be telling us, you know, about the deacons and everything that he made at that time. But when we get into Acts, it's dealing with the church. Yeah. Now, yeah. We, we do know that the, the, that the church is in our hearts. Yeah. And like I said, we have a, a meeting place, what's called God House, which I always honor. Because even throughout the Old Testament, he had them to take the temple where you come down yeah. to be in their presence. Yeah. Yeah. Now, since I'm not present, God God is with us all the way, but we need to have our mind right when yeah. we come into his house in his very presence. Yes, sir. Uh, we, we need to be on the best that we can possibly be, you know, because if we don't say to make a clown out of us mm -hmm. right here in the Lord's house. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a, a faithful servant in the church. The thing when I was studying this lesson, y'all, uh, to, today, uh, to, yeah, today, Tuesday is my study day. And the fact that we are still dealing with the women's in the church. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if these lessons mean to the members that make up the church, if they mean the same thing to you that they mean to me. But these Sunday school lessons is strictly for the church. Yes, sir. Yeah. Just like we started to started the Bible study, that's yeah. when you just pick and choose what you want to teach. Yeah. Or what spirit of God God give you to teach from. Yeah. But when you're dealing with Sunday school, mm -hmm. that's the teaching part. And these lessons is designed yeah. specifically for his church. Yeah. And it's amazing you all What's going on in our country right now? And all these lessons is surrounded about what? About what? What is the lesson on? Right. Women. Yeah. And the fact our nation yeah. has a lady oh, yeah. running for the president. Now, we don't know who's going to win it, but it's just the fact that it's a lady running for the president of the, for them concerned, this is the empire now, America. Oh, yeah. This is the strongest nation on the face of the earth. This is the most, most blessed nation on the face of God's earth. And right now, we got a woman running for president, and all these lessons that we have are centered around women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't we see God is talking to his church? Yeah. Yeah. And we don't know what God is going to do, but it's just the fact that Seem to me like they just line up with the time that we are in. Now, it going back to say faithful servant in the church. We are dealing with God Church uh, this week. Uh, we are we are we are dealing with the church is coming to life. We ought to see what God is doing. They can give a some very important scripture. Now, go to Acts 9 and 36, which is, is our scripture today. 
As I stated, our, our text, our scripture come from Acts 9, 36 through 43. Now we're going to stop with the first word in there. That word now. So when he said now, something happened before the now. And it's dealing with the church. They can give a read the scriptures. He always does a wonderful job. You can tell he studied lessons because of the the, the scripture that he gave to open up the lesson. And since he said now, he, he read all of the scriptures. We're not going to read them, but we're going to have to go back and catch three of those scriptures uh, uh, that he read. And Sister Porter, if you will, would you go back to 33 through 30, 33 and 35, and it's going to bring us up to now. So now I'm saying something had happened, so let's see what happened to come up to this now. Okay. And there he found a certain man named Ananias, mm -hmm. which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Ananias, Jesus Christ, make it thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. And all that dwelt in Lydia and Saran saw him and turned to the Lord. You see that right there? Because of Peter healed this man in the name of the Lord Jesus, we do know who the head of the church is. Yes, sir. Yeah. And when he healed this man, and I believe that the man had been sick for eight years, some sickness, God put those sickness on somebody for a reason. Yes, now, they had, all of these people in that area had saw this man sick for eight years. And all of a sudden, here the man is wait. I mean, probably healthier than any of them because when Jesus healed you, yes. you've been healed. Paralyzed. So the fact, thank you, Sister Porter, he was paralyzed. And all of a sudden, now the man is up and walking. So what is God doing? God is getting some, Jesus is getting glory for his own sake. Oh, yeah. Letting them know that the man had been now. And Peter said in his name, he said uh, unto Jesus uh, uh, um, that maketh him whole. My brother, my sister, let, let me tell y'all, we in the church, when we get hit with these problems now, let's go to Jesus. That's right. just, just go to Jesus. If we believe in what we are learning. So uh, uh, after Jesus made him whole and told him to arise, he had been laying in a bed for eight years. Mm -hmm. Then the bed that he had been laying in, now he's up carrying the bed. Mm -hmm. You see? Uh, and, and, and when he arrived and made up his bed, and not only when he told him to rise, he, he didn't have to wait around for no time. The scripture said immediately. Notice what it said there. Uh, sister, what am I reading this? Did I hear you right? Immediately. Yeah. All. Immediately. What's that after immediately? And all. Stop right there. All up in that area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why did, was it important for all of them to see? Because God is getting ready to start his church. Yeah. And he wanted all to know the kind of power God. that he yeah. had. This stuff breaking down, crying, and just going crazy when something happens. Let's stop that. Yeah. Because we, we said when we get sick, we say he's a doctor mm -hmm. that never lost a patient. Do we believe? Mm -hmm. And then when we get in some trouble, still on call on a lawyer, <laughs> spending three and four thousand dollars on a lawyer. We say he's a lawyer in the courtroom. But when these things happen, we're gonna we wanna go find a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And start paying this man. Yeah. We say one thing, but we're not living what we're saying. He is all of these things. Boy. And there's so many things he can fix it, we just call on him. And not only call on him, but we're gonna find out unless we gotta believe in him. And this is what he wanted to get all of these people in that area, didn't give it ready to know who Jesus is. To know about the church and the power that we have. So immediately they saw this miracle and they all did what, Sister Porter? They dwelt at Lydia and Saron 
all that dwelt at Salidia and Saron saw him, and they turned to the Lord. That's what I want to get right there. Turn to the Lord. When you come to the Lord, it, it has to be a turning process. You can't come to the Lord and stay the way you are. You got to turn your back on the world and come into doing it God's way. And this is what the miracle was that he did, that all these people could turn to him. And that's what we get to that now. Not that he have shown himself. Not that he have shown I got power over sickness or whatever you need. Now there was a, at Joppa a certain disciple. And let me stop right there. <clears throat> what is a disciple? You don't have to answer. You see what's in here right now? These are disciples in here tonight. You coming down here, we're not playing no game. Jones, I could be home watching the Olympics yeah. <laughs> rather than playing a game, but I'm coming out here to learn of him. And this is what it said. We're going to see the disciples in there now. It said, a certain, a certain dis disciple, a learner, a student of Jesus. Now, this lesson takes time, yeah. AD 35. So this is 35 years after Jesus had been gone out the scene. Yeah. So what, what, what Jesus had other people that had heard him when he was here. Yeah. And 30 some years later, they are still disciples. Those that Jesus has, some, they are in action now. Mm -hmm. And this is in Joppa. A certain disciple named Tobiah, Tobiah which is by interpretation is called Dorcas. And this is right here, the woman, we're still dealing with women, was full of good works. Yeah. And almond deeds, which she did. Now, it had it gave us two names. So the Tobiah was a, a Jewish and Hebrew name. <coughs> And Dorcas was her Greek name. And the meaning from both of them is gazelle. Because she was a, a known, uh, what a gazelle is, is a, it, it has slender features, a gazelle. You ever seen a gazelle, the one that cheated me running out? Yeah. She had sin, uh, 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 slender features, but the thing about a gazelle, when he running, he's so graceful. Yeah, great. <laughs> he just run. So this lady, this the type of lady that she was, bright eyed, yeah, great. a tender look, yeah. and she was a graceful lady. Now, a lot of people might want to know well, how did she have these, these two names? Well, during the days of Alexander the Great, which the Jews was under the rule of the Grecian. Alexander the Great, the Great told him, don't come in here talking that Jewish stuff. You're going to have to learn how to speak Greek. Yeah. And that's where Grecians come from. Yeah. Jews under Alexander the Great had to learn how to speak Grecian, Greek language. Yeah. Now, when they got back home, this created a problem. Yeah. Because if you couldn't speak Greek, somebody thought, I know more than you because I can speak Greek and you can't. Yeah. <laughs> you see how the devil will you people? And that's why we have to be taught to do stuff right. But that's the reason she had these two names. One of them was a Jewish name, and the other one was her Greek name. Uh, but he said that she had good works. What was her good works? She was helping the poor, yeah. and she was supporting the widows. Yeah. How was she helping them? She was a lady that knew how to use that needle. She could sew, and, and she made clothes. Uh, uh, she made clothing, and she didn't mind the clothing that she made, giving it to the needy. Yeah. Now she was a wealthy lady, oh, yeah. so she didn't take out. She didn't just keep keep getting richer and richer for as material thing, mm -hmm. but she kept getting richer and richer in the sight of God yeah. by helping the poor. Yeah. You oh, know, yeah. something happened to me. Things happen for a reason, Sister Turner. Mm -hmm. I went to the doctor Monday, uh, and I was going to 
just take me on route back home. And I was going, it, 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 I don't know if y'all know what Bents and Fallon is. Uh, uh, it, it's over off of 288 in that area over there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I said, well, I'm just going to ride up Fallon. I used to work downtown when I first came to Houston. The first job I had was downtown Houston. Church. I said, I'm going to just ride, go back toward downtown and see how it looks. I know everything. Man, when I got up there, it was so, things that changed me, I got lost. Yeah, you yeah. will. But, but but this is what happened, y'all. I was going to Maine, where 59 is, is highly elevated up. You know what I saw over there? A community of homeless people. Yeah. A community, man. And and, and just so happened the light stopped me. And when I stopped, it was a lady standing on the corner. And I just looked at that situation and my heart failed. Yeah. To see all of these people, they just laying down on the yeah. ground, uh, and all of these shopping carts with whatever they have in, that little in the little shopping cart. But this one lady, she was standing there, and it would look like she was looking me dead in the eye, but she couldn't see me because my windows are highly tinted mm -hmm. in my truck. This was God working on me. Yeah. And as I looked at her, it looked like she should have been in her 70s, late 60s, early 70s. And the spirit told me, that's a young lady. But this is what living in these conditions had done to her skin. She looked so old, and her hair was so, I'm not just talking about it, but it was so nappy and dirty. Yeah. She just looked at filth. Mm -hmm. And you know what, what went to my, through my mind, Reverend we To see these people laying up on, this is their home. Yeah, that's it. And, it's a, and it was so filthy, and it was just a mess. And then I, I thought about two weeks ago, Oh, yeah. At 8.30, yep. one Monday morning, yeah. my lights went out. <laughs> and they came back home the same day, 6.30, how miserable I was. Yes. <laughs> From 8.30 that morning to 6.15, that they come on at 6.15. Yeah. How miserable I was. And you know how miserable I was? I got threw off track. You know how you have a routine on doing something? Yeah. Then that's how we're off track, you know. Because you the light was out in the house and the air condition wasn't working. And I'm thinking that this is this is what I call a problem and I see this. And they have it all the time. This is their home, no roof over their head. And a lot of them are just laying there asleep. And it was about 12 or 15. And I said, Lord, have mercy on me. And I felt so sorry. And I just wish there's something we could do to try to help. And then I thought about here we have got these athletes sitting up here all upset because I can't get a $50 million contract. They raising hell about a $50 million contract. And you got people out here. If the rich would take all of this money and try to do something to help the poor, we could solve this problem. Mm -hmm. You got, you got your hand up? Yes, sir. It's a sad world. They don't even have clean water to drink. Thank you. For something that we as, as children are. We, that water, we didn't have to buy water. No. This water is just something water. new. Just free. Yeah. They don't even have clean water to drink. Yeah. Not at all food. Just clean water. Just clean. God gives to it. Yeah. But they don't have that. Yeah. And when I was looking at this lady, I was thinking about a lady and her personal hygiene. Yeah. God had her look, it was like I'm looking at her, but I know she couldn't see me because you ever look at my woman? They're so timid you can't see. But it was like she was looking at me right in the, it was God talking to me. That's right. He said, you, he said, my people got so much to be thankful for. Yeah. See, when we come in here on Sunday to praise him, we ought to almost blow the top off of this right. building. Because of how blessed we are. Like Deacon Preston said, this new stuff about buying water. Yeah. We used to get water out of the fountain. Now we don't drink water out of no fountain. Oh, and not only that, if the name that's right on the bottle, we don't want it. Right. <laughs> we so spoiled. We are. And to see people living like this, I said, Lord. Yeah. And, and that's why I got lost, because God wanted to show me this. And let us know how blessed we really are being part of his church. And let me tell you this. If they would have enough sense to get from under those bridges and seek God, 
He can make a difference in their, in their life. How do you know? Because of what David said. I'm an old man now. But I've been young. But never have I seen a righteous man hungry. Nor have I seen his seed. Begging for no. Get right with God. And you can get from under those bees. And when we think about trying to help them, they can really help themselves. Yeah. If they want to give their life to Jesus Christ. They don't want to be helped. Who is that? Yeah. Right. But because the rules and guidelines they come by. Yeah. And that's what you say. We got laws and stuff. There's certain things you could do. Okay, real. Well, you see, a lot of those people, man, because my son is one of those people. Uh -huh. And mental illness have a lot to do with people being homeless. Yeah. But mental illness is overlooked. And a lot of things is being said over mental illness being overlooked. They don't want to this, they don't want to that. Their minds is not what we think they ought to be. Yeah. And I'm telling you something I know firsthand because my son is one of the very people you're talking about. Yeah. Because of the middle of illness, yeah. he's at the beacon. Yeah. Living at that, that joint. It's, it, it's like Skid Row in California. I hear that. So a lot of those people, it's not that they're, uh, they don't want to seek God, but they're so confused. It's just like the, the kid in the tomb. Yeah. Until he met Jesus, he was just crazy. Yeah. And that's what got to get him to Jesus sometimes. A lot of times, they take an individual day and call it. As far as I'm concerned, it's a Jesus case. Yes. Because yeah. I've done everything I possibly could do. Yeah. But at the same time, it's, that problem still exists. And a lot of times, folks just simply overlook mental illness. Mental illness, and there's also something else because, like I was telling you, the, the, the thing went across my mind is, is, is we have the rich people, somebody fighting about a uh, $50 million contract. Yeah. Another thing, people think $15 an hour is some good pay. You can't live off of $15 an hour. Not you cannot live off of no fifteen dollars an hour. You got to buy gas to go back and forth to work. You got to feed yourself. If you can stay in a place now, you can't. They say you can't hardly get a place now. I hear. Uh, I was just looking at the Olympic games, and, and the guy said you can't find nowhere to stay on the two thousand dollars a month. You know, I think the average what a poor man fifteen hundred dollars a month just to live in a ordinary apartment. You got to have insurance to drive your car. You got to buy gas, you got to eat. And I told you the day me and my wife, when I finally, one day we stopped by, uh, uh, and I ain't going to stay here long, uh, Whataburger, and I asked for uh, two Whataburgers, no cheese on them. Two Whataburgers, two orders of fries, and two apple pies, and they said $22. I almost tell them to keep it. But I'm just telling you, yeah. that's another thing. Because if you got a job making fifteen dollars an hour, you miserable trying to pay your bills and live. That's right. And if you got two or three children too, yeah. you just can't do it. Uh, so we, 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 but we got a bless. We need to thank God and we need to pray and do all that we can to try to get people to Jesus Christ. But this, this is what this lady was about. She wasn't about wealth for herself. This is what her good deeds were. The, the good works that he's talking about here. She was helping the poor, and she was also helping the widows, you know, because it was required by God for somebody to help those widows, and she's doing God's work. And then in verse, verse 37, uh, and it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, Lord have mercy, whom when they had washed, they laid her in the upper chamber. Now, they don't look, lay anybody in the upper chambers. They don't wash anybody. Now, you know they didn't do no, uh, they, they would have anointed the bodies back then, but the fact that she, uh, they washed her, they cleaned up, and they put up in that, she was wealthy. The wealthy always get better taken care of than the poor. Now, don't think that there's always an advantage in that. Because I know a man that was live uh, lavishly every day. <laughs> and, and I know he, he, he dressed in purple every day. Yeah, yeah. He ate yeah. sumptuously every day. Yeah. 
Now, when he died, they gave him a royal funeral. Oh, yeah. But another man died that laid at his gate and the yeah. thoughts of some angels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, that's and that's who directed this funeral. Right. The other man had horses and chariots, but God sent some angels. And when they woke up, Lord have mercy. Right. One of them, the rich man that had it so well down here, I need a, just a drop of water to do something about me being tormented down here. Mm -hmm. So just because it, it's not about being wealthy and being rich, mm -hmm. and if you're wealthy and you're rich, we better learn how to share that share with the needy. That's right. So uh, the lady became sick and died. Yeah. Whom when she, they had watched her uh, and laid her in the upper chain. Uh, it was Jewish custom to wash uh, but those that was a little high up got to go in the upper ch chamber. They would also anoint the bodies. Uh, she was a lady of integrity. Uh, <clears throat> she was doing good work. Let me tell you something. It paid to do some good work while you're down here. It's no work up there. But when you get up there, your work will be tried. And if it was all right in the sight of God, it's going to be tried by the fire. And if it suffer loss, if it, if it burn, you're going to suffer loss. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have to do the good work while she was while we're down here. She was wealthy. She was all right. But she did good work and she died. And they treated her with respect uh, by washing her and laying her in the upper chamber. Sometimes we wonder, y'all, why sometimes let like good people die? Well, well, sometimes, like you say, you have some of the presidents. I don't. I guess I'm sort of messing up if I go to calling names. <laughs> but even you know, the, when they tried to kill Reagan, trying to kill this man, trying to kill Joy Wallace, and we know that they were these people had racial issues. But then you get somebody like John F. Kennedy. Yeah. You get somebody like Martin Luther King. They put a poor, they put a people. You get somebody like Robert Kennedy. Yeah. Sometimes you wonder, why That's do why the I'm good sure. sometimes get killed? Uh, but let me share something with you. God is always in control. Yes, he is. You know, so that's not for us to see. But sometimes these thoughts just run through our mind. Because you could, if this lady was doing all of that good back then, when poverty was the way it was back then. But we're gonna find out God not through with this lady. No. So let me just slow down and teach the lesson tonight. But still we ask the question sometimes, why do seem like bad things happen to God? Now, even if death happened to one of us and we really believe what the scriptures say, it might seem like something bad happened. But God will take the good out of a bad world and put them in his presence. Why? Because the scriptures say to be absent from the body in this world, then we are instantly present with the Lord. So what seems bad to us when that person wakes up after that transition, they're in a much better place. And that's just the way things seem to us. But God is not done with this situation because he, this is letting people know who he is. During this time, 35 AD, 35 years after the death of his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, and what were we on, 37? 38. 38, 38. And far as much as Lada was now, what did he say, now, that now is saying, uh, now to Jap. Near to Jap. <laughs> and here we go again, y'all. The who? He's dealing with disciples. Yeah. He's dealing with those that know can be taught. Mm -hmm. Everybody cannot be taught. No, everybody can't be taught. You have some people that's unteachable. Mm -hmm. But for those that are teachable, God's going to use you. And he's going to use you to bring glory to him. Right. And sometimes when God uses us to bring glory to him, it might be uncomfortable to us. Yeah. But he's doing it to bring glory to him own self. 
in so much that it was near to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there. What was it that they heard about Peter? Remember what I said it now? He had healed Ananias of his sickness, who had been sick for eight years, and Peter going and healed a man, and here the man is walking around him, and some of them, like me, uh, uh, I told my doctor about it, I've been having a little back pain. He said, well, so what? If you're 74, you're going to have them. He said, that's the, he said, you all right? He said, I, I said, just sometime. He said, well, you're 74. That's all the riders. <laughs> so, so this man that Ananias is probably walking around better than some of them because Jesus had worked the man, or Peter had through Jesus worked the miracle. That's why that nine is in there. So once this lady died, the disciples, these students, the ones that had heard about the wonderful works of Jesus Christ, it bothered. I'm the pastor, y'all. Y'all ought to be surprised at some of the calls I get sometimes when people break down and the thing that they are breaking down about. If one of my members just let certain things break, and some of these things that, that break you down, the simple answer is call Jesus. He's there for you. And what he said, he said, if the Lord get heavy, take my yoke upon me and, and learn of me for my yoke is easy and my burden are light. That's what he said. And sometimes when we have to go through a few burdens, we, we let it tear us down. But if somebody else know you and know you're supposed to be a Christian, they see you getting towed down like that, you're no different from them. The thing that separates us from the world is when we go through something, we got God on our side. Oh, yeah. right. We ain't no better, you all. It's just that we got God on our side to help us through these things. Yeah. And if we start showing that God is on our side, I don't need Joe to get a new car and go tell somebody, God bless me with this car. But if I got one of my children is, is acting like, uh uh. I said, I've got hooked on drugs or something like this. And I can tell them, God going to fix this situation. Oh, yeah. Sorry. And, and, and I carry myself like I believe that. Oh, yeah. Because when we're talking about the fervent, effective prayers of the righteous, we need to know what fervent means. Mm -hmm. We need to know what effective means. That means that when we pray to God, we know God can do it. We believe God can do it. And we're just sitting around waiting to see God do what we know that he can do. Yeah. Of the righteous. He said, very much to God and to those that are watching us. Mm -hmm. so, so, so we find out here uh, 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 that the disciples had heard that Peter was there and sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay and come to them. We're getting ready to go somewhere. We don't have a, we're not going to be here long tonight. But they had, they had heard about what Peter could do through Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, and they sent to him. And Peter, we, we got to be like Peter. We can't be sitting around when we got something to do for the Lord watching the Olympics. <laughs> and we know the Texans going to come on Thursday. Choir members, if you got to come to choir practice, you're going to sit up here and say, I'm going to stay home and watch the Texans. <laughs> Knowing that you're supposed to be down here practicing and coming here and singing praises to God. It's important for you, the, the choir singer. To sing with, from the spirit, from within you, because somebody could be sitting out here in this congregation that's burning down yeah, all right. with some of the problems of this world. And by the time the deacons get through praying, if they don't open their heart up, you know who's next to open their heart up? The choir, the song service. Songs have been known to live burning. Oh, yeah. Off of God's children, because we're coming in here to worship and praise him. And we're coming in here to hear from on high. And it's my job to preach the gospel unto them. But if they still worried about these problems, between the deacons praying and the choir singing, they ought to open that heart up for that word to go inside of them. Mm -hmm. And they can leave here better than they came into this building. 
But these disciples had heard about what Peter had done. They're getting yeah. ready to go into action. And they desired him that he would not delay and come to them. And Peter arose and went there. Boy. Peter was in a hurry about doing Jesus' work. Yes, sir. The world have got too slow about doing the work of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. We say something, uh, uh, Brother Trout, and I, and I know we know Reverend William, he, he, he might got a little taste of it. And Deacon Preston Gibbon, we all know that. And then again, I, I think they were doing the same thing in the city that they were doing in the country. When them old country people was, didn't have no transportation that like yeah. we got now. Oh, yeah. And they were on their way to church. Oh, yeah. And they heard them singing in church. What did they do? Yes. They got in a hurry. Because they wanted to be in every part of it. Yeah. Church started at eleven fifteen. We have people coming in here sometimes at twenty five minutes to twelve. Yeah. But like the Rockets, the Astros, Cowboys, we want to get there early. But Peter rose, went to them, and when he come, they brought him into the what? You know who was in the upper chamber? That's what she was. They had heard about what Peter did. Yeah. I don't know. They brought him to the upper chamber and all of the widows. That's why it pays to help somebody. The widows, the one that she had been making clothes, sharing her wealth with, helping taking care of them. All the widows stood by her weeping. Now that showed a sign of weakness. I mean weakness. Uh, but look, let me tell you something. This is only uh, uh, 35 A.D. This now we 2024 yeah. A.D. They did not have this. They didn't have the Bible. They, they didn't have the Sunday school book. So we got all of this to learn about them. They are a lesson to us. So if they was up there weeping and showing the coat and garment with Dorcas made, showing her good works while she was with them. What can we show God? We better be careful. Sometimes we show him how we can act a fool, even in his house. But her works were shown. They showed the work by the thing that she had did with them. What can we say that we've done for anybody? Are we selfish? Is it all about me? I can show somebody how nice a car I can drive, how fancy I can dress up, and all of these things. But she showed, her work showed, they had on her good works. Yeah. She took that needle and her material and help widow because widows couldn't work back then. It was against their custom for ladies to work. <clears throat> so she was doing good work, y'all. Sometimes I wonder when these people walking down the street right in front of us. How do we treat them? Will we say, speak to them? Or do we act like we gotta get away from them or we think they're gonna hurt us? <laughs> that we scared of them. Don't you know that make a person feel bad? Yeah. Just a normal person walking up down the street, normal, just like you and I, and you act like you scared of him? Uh, uh, because the William, I'm a Christian, I, uh, you know, I don't want to get too close, he might snatch my wallet. <laughs> that stuff might happen every now and then. Oh, yeah. We need to speak to them people, show some courtesy. And every now and then tell them, man, why don't you come in sometime and wish it with us? Yeah. That's what we should be doing. So here they are in the garments with dark, darkest maid. Wow. 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 She was with them. Yeah. Doing good works while she was up and could help somebody. But Peter put them all full. In other words, he put them out. Now, <clears throat> let me go into this a little bit, y'all. You remember we went to, this is why I, I, I wish the church and all churches would start going to things. Like, like I, I know somebody have given these associations a bad name. 
somebody say that these associations are only after your money. It costs the association to run, just like it costs our church to run. They need money to run. Association just, just start five or six years ago. When I was a little child, little boy, mm -hmm. association was going on then. That's right. And we, it's not a racial statement because I don't know what the white people were doing. But when I was in the country, just about all black people went to the association. You, you couldn't get them all on the church campus. And the house was so packed that they was on the outside. And the open window, they was at the windows trying to hear what was going on. But, but now we, we've got this thing about all they are after is money. And the reason I'm going now with this uh, uh, is because of what I see here in the scripture, how he put them out. He put them out that was weeping. He put them out that was crying. When we went to that workshop, it said that don't bring a bad spirit into the church because that spirit could be failed. We don't believe that. We don't understand that. But it can be failed. Sometimes people ask questions about is something wrong with that individual there? Don't look like something is missing there. But he put the, the, the negative spirit out. Boy. That's what he did. He separated the weeping and the crying. It, it had to get out of there. Like Joseph said, Jesus did that. And showing the coat. Uh, I mean, he put them all full. Got them all out of there. The weeping and this crying. And once he got them out, then he kneeled down. That's another thing. We're coming up short, you all. We don't pray like we used to pray. He removed the spirit that these ladies showed. And the next thing he did, before he went up with prayer, he went down on his knees. You ever heard that old saying? The best way up is the first go down. These are lessons for us. So he went down and he prayed, but he had to separate those spirits. He didn't look down on them. Now what we would do, we would look down on the weak and the slowful. Peter did not do it. He just got them out of there because he didn't want both of those spirits bumping heads there. And he went down and he prayed. And turning him to the body said, to Bathur. Arise, Lord have mercy. Oh, yeah. What seemed like a bad situation. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she set up. set up. Again, he removed that spirit. And we better get in our mind, you all. We better learn. What did Jesus tell the lady from Samaria? When they talking about we worship in the mountain and they worship in the temple. He said it's going to come a time if you're going to worship my father you must worship him in spirit and in truth. Get rid of this negative spirit that we bring into the Lord's house. Don't bring it into the Lord's house because it has a negative effect. Come in there with the right spirit. That's what Jesus said and the time is now that we must worship him in spirit and in truth. And we that call ourselves a Christian, I don't care what this world throw at us, if God is for us. Oh, yeah. Help me somebody. Who can be against us? Yeah. Nobody. So Peter knew what he was doing because he had been transferred. Uh, he's not the same old Peter was. The, the, the day of Pentecost had came. Yeah, yeah. And he had been overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's just like Paul. Paul wasn't nothing until that day on, on the Damascus Road. <laughs> it's too many people have not been overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. 
See? Uh, he was wrong, but he had the right, wrong spirit. Too many people have not met Jesus. And when you meet Jesus, you are new. You, if any man be in Christ. Amen. And let me tell you something. If any man, somebody know him, people will tell you, man, that, that boy ain't who he used to be. People will be saying that about you. Because if you've been chained, the chain can be seen in you. Oh, yeah. See the man being right? He is a new creature. All things will pass away and be what? All things become new. So he got rid of that weeping spirit, went down on his knees, prayed to God, and that's how I was saying the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous. Oh, yeah. Availing much. When Peter went down on that, he knew what God was capable of doing. Yeah, he, he knew it. Yes, sir. See, we pray and we don't have to believe our prayer. Got to believe it. That's the effectual when you know God is able to do it. Mm. And the verbal man that you enthused about it, you happy about it because you know what? I know that he is able. And when you go to God praying like that, I know God. I know this God that I serve. I know he's able. Oh, yeah. And even if he don't fix it, he'll still see it. Thank you. Be like the Hebrew yeah, boy. He fix everything. Yeah. He fixed it for the three Hebrew boys. Yeah. But they said that even if he didn't, I know he's able. Yeah. He, yeah. and, and what did Esther say last week? When, when she knew that if I go into a Texas house, I know he could strike me down because he hadn't lifted up that scepter. Yeah. I, I know he could kill me just by going in there. But I'm going to go in there anyway. And if I perish, Lord have mercy. That's the kind of faith you uh, we're missing now. And that's the kind of faith our poor parents had. They knew whatever they were going to do, God was going to see them through. That's right. And this is what this man Peter is doing. He knew what he was doing. That's why I got them out of there. I don't need no, disturb, no disturbance. I, I know what my God can do. She opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she said, uh, it was only one thing that, uh, now this is me, y'all. Uh, uh, this is just me. Uh, it, it might not be important, but it was just me. When I read it, it said, and turn him to the body. He said, arise. But I thought he should have said, in the name of Jesus, arise. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it would have been good. But, but they knew what he had did in Jesus' name before he got there. Yeah. Yeah. But to me, it seems like, to me, that's what I'm going to do, Joe. He could have said it in his prayer. Huh? He could have said it in his prayer. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. I but I just saw it missing in there. Yeah. You know, I, I saw that in Jesus' name because we can't do nothing in our own. Yeah. No. But in Jesus' name, we, we could do all things. Uh, and, 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 and he gave her his hand. Uh, uh, that's verse 41. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. Yeah. And when she had called the saint and widow presenting her alive. Uh, thank God, like I'm saying, that he didn't act up, he didn't tell you, get out of here, you unbelieving women. Get out of here, you cry baby. He showed compassion. Oh, yeah. And, and sometimes, that's going back to the name of being a Hebrew and just being a Jew. The Hebrew thought, I meant uh, Grecian, and, and just being a, a regular Jew, yeah. the Grecian thing, I, I know a little bit more than you. I'm a little bit better than you. Yeah. He didn't show none of that here. He just removed them out of there because of the bad spirit that they had. But when, when they, and they came back in there, that's what he said. And uh, he called the saint and the widow. Notice what he said, saints and widows. Yeah. And presented her, showed them yeah. uh, what the Lord could do. I'm so glad it wasn't no Hebrew, I mean no Pharisee there. Oh, I'm so glad. For Peter to do this, and it wasn't no Pharisee there, because Jesus saw a man had been born by.
from his birth. And all Jesus was showing them who I am. Because everybody knows this man. Y'all been seeing this man all his life. Because he was born blind like this. And Jesus came and gave the man his sight. Guess what happened? Once the Pharisees heard about Jesus giving the man his sight, you know what they did? Let's go check with his parents. Yeah. Yeah. And find out. Guess what they were looking for? And asked the parents, uh, uh, where did your son get this sight from? Now, if y'all think I'm not telling the truth, somebody find John 9, 22 through 25. And we're going to find out that, that, that uh, uh, and I'm glad they wasn't there. John 9, 22, start at 22. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. Wait a minute. Why are they fearing the Jews? The, they, they, the son just got here. Go ahead. <laughs> well, the Jews had already agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Oh, they're going to put his parents because of Jesus giving a man sight that they all knew that the man was born like. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Don't come asking us. And the reason they had to answer like that because if they would have said the wrong thing, they would have put some hurt on them. Go ahead, sister. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. <laughs> he answered and said, whether he be a sinner or not, I know not. One thing I know. <laughs> That whereas I was blind, now I can yeah. see. But now, see. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what y'all come to me with all looking for this fault. Yeah. When we have people with the wrong idea, just block them out. Yeah. Be like this man. Yeah. You say he was a sinner? I don't know that. Mm -hmm. Whether he was a sinner or whether not, yeah. I don't know that, but this I do know. I once was blind, yeah, I know that. I but now I uh, see. <laughs> Brother Trout, I can tell anybody that I once was lost, yeah. but now I'm fine. I once was blind, yeah. not physically blind, yeah. but spiritually blind. Yeah. But now, now I can see. I thank God that He gave me some spiritual vision. Sometimes we run into people that are spiritually blind. What do we do? Talk about them, push them to the side. Be patient the way he was patient with these crying widows. Show some compassion. Okay. And we have to learn how to show some compassion. Because all the time, regardless, we have to be, we're trying to win them over. And don't let them make us act the fool. Because Satan would definitely do that if we give way to him. Now, since all this happened, you all, this is the this is the church coming into existence. Look at verse forty-two. Because of what had happened here, it was known throughout all Joppa. Yes, sir. And many believed in the Lord because of what they witnessed, what they heard. My brother, my sister, when God does something for us, don't just keep it inside. Yeah. Tell the world yeah. what God is doing mm -hmm. for us. Because whatever he does for us, he's doing it to get glory for his own sake. Yeah. We living in a time now where we want glory for every little thing we do. Every little thing, yes, sir. And if you get glory, you ain't, God doesn't have anything for you up there. You don't want to get just glory down here. Right. And the one thing we ought to know that God has separated us out of the world. Set us apart from the world. Oh, yeah. We ought to be different than the world. Job, I, uh, John, I can love anybody that loves me. Oh, yeah. No, that's easy. <laughs> but can I love my enemies? Oh, yeah. Can I love them that despitefully use me? Talk about, can I love those that knife me in the back? Well, if you can't, you better learn how to. Yeah. Because that will separate you. Oh, 
world. Yeah. From the people of this world. Yeah. Because just like what happened here, somebody's going to tell the good, the good things that happened. We could have some young people around this church. When they see somebody that being a real Christian, you could be an example for them. It's not always about the one that's doing something bad. Let good outweigh bad every time. So God was doing all of God put us asleep when you could ask the question, why would, did this good lady have to die? You see why she had to die. Because God is getting some glory for his own sake. That's why I had to go back to the scripture and say, he ought to say it in the name of Jesus arise. Give that glory to where it belongs. Because it was known throughout all of Joppa. Now, let me tell you something about Joppa too. We do know Joppa was a seaport. Oh, yeah. And why is it so important that these things could happen in, at a seaport? A lot of foolishness going on in that city. No. People come from all over the world coming to a seaport. And when they can come into a seaport and get this, once you get it, take it back all over the world. Just tell it everywhere you go. Don't just keep this in Joppa. This got to go all over the world. That's why it tells us about Joppa. It went all throughout the job. So people that come in on those ships, yeah. they heard about this. Yes, and when people were going out, they could tell it wherever they went. Yeah. What happened? Jesus brought a lady back to life that was dead. Yeah. Yeah. And it came to pass. We're getting out of here today tonight. That he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon the temple. And I know when y'all heard that, something went off in your head. <laughs> When he talked about Simon the town. Now, Peter just couldn't get up and leave. He was under the direction of the Holy Spirit. And it came to pass that he tarried many days. Why would he need to be there many days? Somebody run over to uh, 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 the next chapter. Acts 10, 5, and 6. We're going to find out about this. Because they were about the town of Simon the town. Yeah. Acts 10, 5 and 6. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodged with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He should tell thee what thou ought to do. God is getting ready to start working on conditions. Yeah. I'll tell you. Not no Jew. These Jews, they thought it was only for them. He getting ready to work on Italian. Cornelius. Yeah. And told Cornelius to, told him to go to Joppa to Simon the Tanner House. And the man you find there, his name is Simon Peter. And, and then let's go back up to 10 and 1 real quick and we're going to call it a night. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. In Caesarea! A centurion of the band called the Italian man. Mm -hmm. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. And they thought it was always for them. How is it that, 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 that Cornelius heard about this? Thank you for asking. Because some of those that heard about Jesus when he was here, they took it all over the world. And here we find Cornelius the Italian. Somebody had told him he had heard about Jesus. And he was concerned about him and his whole house. Yes, but he needed somebody to come and insist to him. Boy. And then when Peter got there, Peter went there. Peter learned a lesson when he got there. Because he went there with that old Jewish stuff in his mind. <laughs> when the man told him he had saw a sign. It's all this kind of meat, but I don't eat no meat. Peter! Anything I clean, don't you call it unclean. That's right. yeah. You ain't in them old days no more, Peter. Yeah. A chain have come about. This is the dispensation, dispensation of the church. And it's not only for the Jews no more. No. This is for everybody. It's not under the law. It's not under no law. We are under the dispensation <laughs> of grace. And Jesus, the people that come in contact with yeah. him went all over the world. 
We don't know how far this thing going. That's another thing why we have to support this association. Yeah. You you didn't get to no, you wasn't there when they showed the church that they're getting ready to build over in Africa. And they showed the beam that we have bought. It's gonna be a multi-million dollar church. And this is about the church that they building over in Africa. And they showed the material that our money have paid for. And we don't have nothing to be bragged about. Uh, Y'all know Reverend James down in Galveston? Uh, we've been to his church, I can't think of the name of his church. James, Reverend James. He said that they were trying to raise this money. They, 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 they said that they asked them, could the, the Baptist Mission District Association, could we take on the task of raising five million to buy the beans uh, over in Africa? And he said he had been after the association, uh, 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 I mean, 10,000, excuse me. They wanted 5,000 from the Baptist Mission because, see, all of the associations come together to help. Tim is over all of the associations. But this is what they was asking out of the Baptist Mission Ditch. And, and James said the money was slow coming in. And he said he had been praying and praying and he said, it looked like it wasn't going to happen. And he said, a white lady just showed up. And he said, he was at, at church one day, praying to the Lord. Lord, we, we run it slow on the phone. Lord, just help us. Since we done took this on to send $5,000, Lord, will you help us to raise that $5,000? And he said, a white lady walked in this church. And asked him what was he doing now. He said he was in there praying. And she said, for some reason, I just ended up at your church. Is that what he told me? And saying, here, I have an envelope that I want to give to you. So he took the envelope. He didn't open it right there because he didn't want to just, you know, like it's just put in this envelope. Mm -hmm. So he just took the envelope, said, thank you. And the lady turned around and walked out of the church. And he said, open up the envelope. And said, it was a cash your chicken now for $10,000. Mm. And he said, he jumped up because all he wanted to do was just catch it with her and yeah, say, thank you. Didn't and when he went outside, he didn't see him no more. Mm. God is still yeah. in the miracle of working business. God is still building churches, y'all. All over the world. And when we could help build a church, <clears throat> going off of Matthew 28 chapter, go ye therefore, and our nation baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Lord. When we continue to do what he's going to do, we send something to help them, guess what's going to happen in return? Somebody help them. Say it out loud, Sister Turner. You get it back, that It's going to come back more than we sent off. Oh, yeah. And for that lady to do that, and Green Meadow helps support over there because we pay our dues to the state. Whatever what's required of us, we pay. And if you want to know what it is, I don't mind telling you. When I go to the state convention, what is it, Preston, 250? Yes, sir. We pay our 250. Because Green Meadow is not a cheap church, and God don't cheat us. Don't treat us cheap. Whatever we need, God, he help us meet our needs. We don't have a whole lot of members of this church, but God help us meet our needs. Whatever we set our mind out to do. Everybody is so excited, the rest of these churches that have been over to our church, and I don't do things to brag, I don't do things to show off. When they come in here and see how the Lord blessed us with these screens all over the church and everything, they say, man, y'all are blessed over there. And that's the truth. We are blessed. We're no larger than none of these other churches. And some of them are struggling financially. But as long as we work together, as long as we show love one for the other, Boy. do the best you can to follow the leader that God gave us. It's not always easy. Yeah. And you ought to see how God can bless us. And when that man James told us that, he almost shouted when he said that. And I was so glad they showed it. Because I told Moderator William one time, man, I would like for us to, sometime if we could get some, some literature 
to take that type of trick to show them what we're doing in other countries. Yeah. I think it would help. I think the people wouldn't mind giving them. Show them what we build a well that the people could have running water. Yeah. Show them what we are clothing people. And another thing they said is good about our association when they send clothes all over the world, they said it's not always some hand-me-down. Yeah. They said sometimes people send clothes over with a with a, a new tag on it. But it's not nothing wrong with giving hand-me-down, but don't give them stuff that you need to throw in the trash. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Because we got plenty of stuff that's good enough that sometimes you come in here wanting, wearing something so nice, I want to take you in the bathroom, throw you down, and, out, and take Watch what out. you got off while I'm wearing my suit. <laughs> <laughs> But let's just do our part, man. <laughs> a faithful servant in the church. Amen. God was making himself known at this time. Oh, yeah. And look how far he had brought the church, y'all. And the church is still somebody. Don't you y'all fool nobody. We got more power than people think we have. We're the most powerful force known to man. Yes, sir. And when we pray like Peter pray, uh, when we pray like Peter prayed here, when he got rid of all of the negatives and went down on his knees, and God raised this lady from the dead. Because prayers could go places no spaceship can go. Prayers could go places no submarine can go. It could reach heights that no man knows about. And it could reach depths that no man. If you make your bed in hell, guess who's there? Then he's already there. If you make it, Lord have mercy. Beautiful lesson, you all. <laughs> A servant, yeah. a faithful servant, not just a servant. Because there's one thing we could all do. I might can't, I, maybe I can't preach like Job and William and John. Oh, please. I might not be able to preach. Them. Maybe I can't sing like Sister Porter. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I can't worship like Sister Turner. Maybe I can't pray like Preston and Gibber. But it's one thing I can do. That, be faithful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I can do. And that's what God is looking for. It's not how well you can do. Oh, I want somebody to be faithful. Yeah, but that rocket and that spaceship thing was good. All right, all right. <laughs> Let us bow our heads in the morning of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this lesson. We thank you for all those lessons. Father, we feel like you're dealing with us in the time that we're in. We know what's going on in our nation. We pray, Lord, that you would just help the church be the church. Help us to be the yeah. light of the world. Help us to be a city that sits upon the hill. Yeah. So many things that were brought out in this lesson. When the widow was weeping and crying, Peter didn't look at it as a weakness. He just removed them, Lord, that he could have the right spirit in the upper room yeah. when he prayed to you. Because, Father, he didn't need no negative spirit buffing with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, Lord, we thank you about the fervor and the effectual prayer of a righteous man. Yeah. None of us are right on our own. But through your Son and through your Holy Spirit, we can be right in your sight. We want to be used by you, Lord. We want to make a change in this world. Lord. We want to send a gym, raise up a young generation. Yeah. Oh, it seems like you could come and take your church out of here at any time. But even though it seemed like that, we yet we know that one year is as a thousand years. Oh yeah. And we know that Noah, God have mercy. He preached to them a hundred and twenty some years. Still they kept making fun of him. What are you gonna say? When is it gonna rain? But one day, yeah. the rain fell. And the doors were shut. One day. Yeah. Talking about your church. You're coming back after your church. Oh, yeah. Lord, we want to be in that number. Yeah. We want our families to be in the number. Yeah. We want our loved ones to be in the number. We want all those that we associate with. We want them to be in that number. Oh, yeah. Most of all, we want this Green Meadow Church family to be in that number. Continue to 
Leave me as the pastor. Thank you for these teachers. Because, Lord, we got to fall in the way at your Sunday school. And I thank you. Boy. The superintendent is here every Sunday. The assistant superintendent is here every Sunday. The teachers are here every Sunday. And as long as you give us health and strength, we're going to keep Sunday school going. Because we fully aware that Sunday school is the gateway to Christianity. We pray that you would send us a younger generation of people. Yes, Lord. That we could tag them with the tag of being disciples. Mm -hmm. the learners of Jesus Christ. To make that generation in this world a better place to live in. Yeah. Oh, we can't do it on our own, but Lord. Mm -hmm. But if you help us to surrender our lives unto thee. If thee can give us that in the prayer. Yes, Lord, it's a teacher's journey. Oh, yeah. But many of us are like Isaiah on the day. During the year they came, us I die. Yes. Yeah. When you touch us and you touch us right, yeah. we have said, Lord, here am I. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Send me Lord. Because you changed me from the way oh, yeah. of the world that I live in. And I thank you for your grace, you. your mercy, and your love. And I thank you for your song that died out young know, yes. on a hill called Calvary while I was yet a sinner. Yes. Uh, we want to take this time tonight and ask you, Lord, to look down on the Taylor family. Yes. Yeah. Bless him, Lord, in your own way. Yes, Give him the assurance that thou art with him. Yes. And all of the sick and the shutting. Yes. In Jesus' precious name, this is our prayer. Yes. Amen, and we thank you.